Hi. Rudy. I'm Fred. I heard you are the one to talk to about the history of Fort Babine community. We've looked at the archaeology around here. It's really great. And I'm curious a little more about some of the recent history of when Europeans arrived, about the fur trade, and some of the things that happened to the salmon. In the 1800s, we had some fur traders coming in. For the first time in, in our history, we've seen uh, fur traders, and that happened. And then prospectors start coming in. And at that, at that time, uh, our forefathers were, were here at the, at the old uh, village site there that you've seen. And um, mm -hmm. they, were, they were trading salmon already, so they used that. But lots of things happened in, in, uh, when the fur traders came in. They saw, uh, we had um, abundance of sockeye here. Right. So I noticed a building down the hill here. Was that where the trading took place? That's right. That white building over there, that's the Hudson's Bay Company. They came in here after it was just, they established, the, they know that they came into the heart of the, the trading network here. So the Hudson's Bay came in, became a middleman in this business, in a, right into the network of business. So they, they came in and start buying salmon. Mm. First thing they came for was the furs, then they came after the fish. So what happened next? The issue became depletion of fish, and so they start complaining to the governments. They start blaming our barricades, mm -hmm. that depletion of fish, but it wasn't so because our forefathers, depletion of fish was never an issue at the presence of, our, of their barricade at that time. It, right. was, it was there for years and years. Yeah. There was no issue of depletion of fish, but at the same time, there was an election for the, for the government. Okay. And the canneries and uh, the fishermen said that if you don't deal with the babbling barricades, we're not going to vote for you. Oh, really? So, oh. 1904, they took it out. They gave out, they, they wanted to compensate for destroying our, our, our barricades, farming implements. Mm -hmm. They said we're going to get the nets to each head hole of the house. They're going to get nets every year. They get seeds. So they're trying to, the government are trying to compensate something that, that doesn't um, really work for us. Mm -hmm. Because of that issue, so the woman start, well, it's not working. We're going to put back the barricade. So mm -hmm. the woman's put back the barricade in 1905. 1906, the, the fisheries came again, and um, they, they'd start taking out the barricades. But the woman rushed in, threw in the fisheries officers, and sat on them. <laughs> the men <laughs> the men were uh, standing on a shoreline, yeah. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> but still the men were sent to New Westminster, nine of them, including one of our chief, for hard labor mm -hmm. for that incident, yes. Really? Yes. That's really unfair. It is. They tore down our barricades so fish could come and so they could catch it at the mouth of the river, mm -hmm. so the canneries could have it. For one thing, in 1886, it was prohibited to set nets in fresh water, and mm -hmm. yet, they were giving us net, so they were breaking their own laws. Oh, um, and also, it's prohibited to build to barricade the river, they said. Mm -hmm. And yet, you see a steel barricade of the government today. The DFO. The DFO. <clears throat> yeah. That's, it, that's, it's there today. So, we lost our currency, our economy, mm -hmm. because of that issue. That was... That was our currency, that was our economy back then. Your wealth. Yes, that, that's what it was. They took it away and we today have a hard time calling, like we're trying to catch up, but it's, it's, uh, it's like, it's really difficult struggling. Mm -hmm. Everybody's struggling because of what government did to us. I mean, with their regulation, their policy, well, there's a lot of talk about reconciliation nowadays. And I think one of the things the government really needs to do is act and give back to your community. 
the fence on the river that uh, is located close by here, you know, you should be the ones in charge of the resources because you have such a long history of managing and conserving and prospering. That's right. That was within our laws and in, in our, in our uh, potlatch system that mm. when you're going to cut a tree, you must do it right. You want to manage the, the fish. Same thing, it's managed. Mm -hmm. All the resources under our Red Terry Chiefs back in those days were managed properly. Mm -hmm. They won't, there's no such thing as wasteful. It was against our belief that, that nothing shouldn't be wasted. From what you've said about the, the history here, it really reminds me of back home where I'm from in Squamish. And we have a flood story. It, and after the floodwaters receded, the creator sent down three gifts to uh, some of the few survivors. And one, there was a wife, a fish trap, and a chisel. Yeah. And it, just, it really reminds me of what you've just told me about the history here, is that what's important, it's family, it's having the resources and the tools to be able to do what you need to do to thrive. That's right. They were simply after our resources. Since I was a, a little kid, 200 trucks go by our village mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like we don't exist here. They're, they're right behind our village here. They're, right now they're, they're up there cutting away right. and we're not getting nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. Our band office is 300 miles away. Wow. It's, it's because of the amalgamation. Again, again, the People were told to move out. The, the Indian agent came around, told people to move out. Mm. Uh, Father Kokola, um, before him, told people to move out. Well, they did move out. They got their jobs at the sawmill, but but what about us that stayed behind? Mm -hmm. uh, where does it, an agreement say that those that stayed behind will will be recognized? No. It, it, there's nothing in there. They took away our, our band status. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, the mayor's the Indian agent, we would have our own chief and council here, and we would have been way better off here. But again, that was pulled out of us. It was like a carpet pull under you. That, mm -hmm. That's what happened when they took our band status away. So, mm -hmm. uh, so the mayor's was here, the amalgamation agreement between Old Fort and Fort Bavin. Elder Alec Michel Gus coming to Fred were supposed to be like this, Old Fort and Fort Bavin. It's an agreement by the government that these two bands are to become one. But at the presence of the of the amalgamation agreement, um, the mayors went around, highest vote was Casimir Williams, he became chief, and the following ones became councillors of the so he did that. The the Indian agent made that happen. He made the election happen. Mm. He made the ban status happen. At the presence of the amalgamation agreement that was was agreed by the federal government or our government of that day. So, I mean, it's injustice yeah. the way it happened. We're surviving on our own all these years. Mm -hmm. Look at all the resources, rich resources. We're middle of the, the trees, we're middle of the mountains. Mm -hmm. Tourists are coming from Japan, Germany, they're all here and, and, and we're trying to, so we have, we finally built our corporation, so we're trying to um, self-determination. So it's not surprising to me, unfortunately, that a lot of what you're talking about sounds really familiar. The problems that the Indian acts, the governments, the missionaries, the business people have all affected your community greatly. What is your community trying to do in modern day to get away from that? We're trying to be self-sustaining. We're trying to do our, or our own logging. We're trying to get into our own fishing. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do our own tourism. So. That's going to take time, but that's our goal to uh, so we can um, uh, at least move ahead. It, it's for our children. The children mm -hmm. don't have nothing. You look at the school, there's no baseball field, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So 
after my project on building a, a baseball field, we're doing it for the children, for the sake of the younger <coughs> generation, so they can come up and have something uh, for them to be uh, successful. Okay. That that's the whole idea. Otherwise, it's it's just gonna carry on like what I witnessed growing up. Oh, it was yeah. there was hardly nothing.